my shirts are wrinkled because I've been living out of my car for 24 days now. I've been on the road. Why do you have to bring that up? No, somebody finally told me about that. Yeah, that I should have one of those poles, those racks or whatever in the back of my car where I can hang my shirts. But I've never figured that out until now. The next time I do this, I'm going to get one of those uh, shirt racks that you can stretch across. That's been the problem. I I always think I'm not going to be able to see out the back window through my rearview mirror. Yeah, I could use the size, the side mirrors. Yeah, but uh, things in those uh, mirrors are closer than what they appear. Yeah, that's right. I'm a literalist. I don't want things to be closer or farther than they appear. I want them to be as they appear. I don't play games. I'm not going to play. I, that's why I don't like the side mirrors because I'm not playing games. I'm not in this life to be deceived. Jesus said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. If something's close to me, then I want to see it as close to me. If something's far from me, I want to see it as far from me. I don't want to have to interpret things. That's true, but God is giving us the interpretation in this book of unveiling. All right, enough of that. Hi, everyone. Martin Zender. We're winding down the week here looking at the fifth beetle. I mean the fifth messenger. Why do you need five? Because five is the number of grace, isn't it, people? Four is the number of worldwide coverage. And we're seeing that with the religions of the world being destroyed. Five is the number of grace. It's four plus one. And it is gracious of God to send a messenger to finally deal with Israel. This is why the scroll, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself, the tiny scroll is both sweet and bitter to the Apostle John. Uh, yeah, I try to, when I, no, when I iron my own shirts, believe me, it, it takes me about 10 minutes to iron one shirt because I'm very careful. I'm like, <laughs> trying to get the wrinkles out. And I iron one wrinkle out and three more appear. So uh, actually, Laura Johnson graciously ironed a shirt for me here in Birmingham, Alabama. So back to the text here. We are in the unveiling chapter 10. And if you can believe this, it's only 11 verses, which means that uh, very soon we're going to be in chapter 11. And that's going to excite many of you because then we start the temple section and we find out about the um, the religious deliverance of God's people, Israel. All right, back with the reading glasses. Thank you very much for your patience. Uh, we left off with this but in the days of the seventh messenger's voice this is verse 7 of chapter 10 which when john is writing this it's still future we've not yet heard the seventh trumpet this is still under the sixth trumpet but we're being introduced to the seven thunders which as epic as they are we don't know what they are because john was not allowed to write ah rats In the days of the seventh messenger's voice, whenever he may be about to be trumpeting, and that would be my lament. Whenever, when when is this seventh messenger going to be trumpeting? Well, whenever that happens, the secret of God is consummated also as he evangelizes to his own slaves and the prophets. And this would be Israel. Verse 8, And the voice which I hear out of heaven speaks again with me and is saying, quote, Go get the tiny scroll which is opened in the hand of the messenger who stands on the sea and on the land. End quote. Verse 9. And I came away to the messenger. God is, John is being made very bold here. Invited to take a tiny scroll, and there's a reason it's small, out of the hand of the fifth messenger. Fearlessly approaches that messenger. Well, by this time, chapter 10, John has become accustomed to his surroundings, as strange as they were at first. And he's quivering and he's quaking at the first. And he's very hesitant. But now... Yeah, the messenger says, come and get the scroll. And he comes and he gets it and he takes it. And I come away to the messenger saying to him to give me the tiny scroll. And he's saying to me, take it and devour it. It will be making your bowels bitter, but in your mouth, it will be sweet as honey. That's where we get that phrase, sweet as honey. You think we invented that? No, it's a biblical term. Ladies and gentlemen, we wouldn't have thought of it on our own. We would have said something stupid like sweet as a banana or sweet as sucralose, sweet as saccharin, but no, sweet as honey. But it's bitter to the bowels. Uh, yeah, we could get quite anatomical here, but I'm not going to go in that 
direction. But as this message is working through John, that's the, the, the bowels are a figure of speech in Scripture. I don't want you to think of the duodenum or the lower intestines. I want you to think of feeling, of passion. A man who speaks with passion is speaking from his bowels, his energy, his effort. And it's, it's a very debilitating to John in his strength because he sees what is going to happen to, but ultimately for, his brethren. And I take the tiny scroll out of the messenger's hand and devoured it. And in my mouth, it was sweet as honey. That is his first apprehension in your mouth. The first, my first sensation was one of sweetness. And I'll tell you why. I'll go ahead and tell you why. It's because of this. There, were, there will be no longer delay. Because the vexation of Israel is the time. Our vexation is time. This thing takes so long. George Harrison sings in My Sweet Lord. It takes so long, my Lord take so long but it's sweet to john to understand that this is the consummation for his people israel and when i ate it my bowels were made bitter this comes from the aspect of judgment because the feet of fire speak of judgment and they are saying to me you must prophesy again as to peoples and nations and languages and many kings <sighs> i'm always seem to speak to be speaking poorly of religion. And I don't bring this up often enough, and I should, and this is what I will say to you today, right now, is that there is one true religion, and it is the religion of Israel. It was also associated with a ritual. It was also associated with fire, and with incense, and with sacrifice. And the reason why the religions of the nations, even those false religions of Baal, the worshipers that Israel dealt with in her early days, they were all imitations. And Satan, and it, it doesn't matter if the imitation comes before the real thing or after. It doesn't matter because Satan knows ahead of time, a little bit anyway, what God is going to do. And so he will preempt it. He will attempt to preempt it and discredit it by doing something false ahead of time. Now, in the case of, um, in the case of Egypt, where Moses and Aaron threw down their staffs and the staffs uh, became serpents at that time the black arts that were utilized by the prophets of pharaoh they imitated it on the heels of the miracle but apparently now and i'm no expert on this uh there were there were fables of the gods before the coming of christ that spoke of a virgin giving birth this is an imitation of satan he's an imitator And so, the fact that Israel has censors and sacrifices, it throws many people off and it brings the true worship of God into disrepute because many people say, well, it's just an imitation of the nations. The nations did this. The nations wanted sacrifice. The nation, the gods of the nations wanted appeased by blood. But whether these things came before or after, again, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't care if they came before because Satan can preempt it. It's a preemptive strike so that it will look as though God is copying some other God. He's in a competition with these other gods, but he's not. He's not. Now, the word another here, we're going to now go through the details. We've read the entire chapter 10. Now we're going to go into the details. And I perceived another strong messenger descending out of heaven. That's verse 1 of chapter 10. This word, another, it sometimes means another kind, like a different kind of messenger. Like we're supposed to see the descent of this fifth messenger from heaven and think, ooh, this is something new. But it can also mean another of the same kind. It's just another and in this case, it's important for you to know that it's of the same kind because we're looking all through this book at the same purpose. Yeah, including demonic forces. I don't care whether a demonic force is being used or an angelic force is being No, No, I don't even care. 
if the beings are coming out of the earth or if there's a mess if there's a messenger coming out of the earth or one descending from the earth and i don't even care if the messenger is a messenger of satan or a so messenger of God. I don't care in this sense, is that both these subserve the same capital G God, and he sends both good and evil to affect his purposes. So that's why it's important for you to know that the word another here is of the same kind, because it's working toward the same purpose. Now, this strong messenger descends from heaven clothed in a cloud and rainbow wreathed in sun face. The face glows like a sun. There's a wreath of a rainbow. Uh, smoke. It can be bad. But what did God put in front of Israel to lead them in the wilderness? What? Yes, a pillar of smoke. And fire by night. And that pillar of smoke led them. Okay, Israel in this book of the unveiling, they're, go, they're in a wilderness that is a hundred times worse than the wilderness they went through with Moses. Because at least they had Moses at that time. They had Moses to explain to them what was happening. They had prophets to explain to them. It, it, it could be that the 144,000 are explaining to them what's happening. But for, for the most part, especially the apostates of Israel, they are feeling abandoned. During this time of their sorest trial, they are feeling left because there's no one to lead them except a false Messiah. And of course, they're getting no good information from that individual, not from the false Messiah. And so they're in a wicked, wicked strait here. So the fact that it's a cloud and the fact that it's a rainbow wreath sun face, I think this is mainly meant to comfort John to say that, look, even though the fire of this messenger is bringing trial to Israel, it's still surrounded by a cloud. It's coming from heaven, not from the bowels of the earth, and it's wreathed in the rainbow. And the rainbow has always been a sign of promise to Israel. Now, if you're wanting me to identify this messenger, the fifth messenger, I will say that it could be Michael. As we know, Michael is the great prince who stands for the sons of Israel. Read Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. And I'm going to take you now at the end of the show to the unveiling chapter 12, verse 7. Listen to this. Chapter 12, verse 7. We're not there yet, but here we go. And a battle occurred in heaven. Michael and his messengers battle with the dragon. There we have the dragon again. And Michael and his, and his uh, messengers, his cohorts, the ones who are of the same mind as he, he's battling with the dragon. And the dragon battles and its messengers. So Satan, the dragon, has its messengers. Michael has his messengers. And he is always, again, the spokesman for Israel. He stands for his people, Israel. Read uh, Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. But they, that is the dragon and its messengers, are not strong enough for him, neither was their place still found in heaven. Because at that time, uh, the dragon is cast out of heaven. But neither were they strong enough, because Michael is stronger. And I'm just suggesting this, but since we have that word strong in Revelation chapter 12, and we also have it, if I can turn back here, chapter 10, verse 1 of the unveiling, I perceived another strong messenger descending out of heaven clothed with a cloud and the rainbow on his head and his face as the sun. I suggest to you that this is Michael. He's a good guy generally speaking, but he's a tough customer. His love is tough. It's tough love. And even though the cloud surrounds him, suggestive to me, if you ask me, of the cloud that led Israel through the wilderness, this is another wilderness, and he has the rainbow, suggestive of God's promise. He also has judgment. And by these two methods, God is going to finally bring his beloved Israel into the kingdom.